Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Federal Soft Tech Limited earnings conference call for the quarter and year ended on 31st March 2023. For the duration of presentation, all the participant lines will be in listen only mode. We will have a question and answer session after the presentation. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. So now, without any further delay, I'd like to hand over the proceedings to Ms. Neha Zoshi, Company Secretary. Over to you, Neha. Thanks, Yashasri. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Neha, Company Secretary and Compliance Officer of Civil Soft Technology. A very warm welcome to all of you for the earnings conference call for the financial results of quarter and year ended March 31st, 2020. For discussion, we have here with us today Mr. Sumi Kulkarni, our Chairman and Executive Director, Mr. Prachi Kulkarni, our Managing Director, Mr. Mandal Inamdar, our Chief Financial Officer, and Mr. Anil Patwadhan, our Financial Advisor. Welcome, everybody. We wish to start by qualifying that during the call, we will make some forward-looking statements. Federal software does not provide any specific revenue earnings guidance. Anything which is said during this call, which may reflect our outlook for the future or which may be construed as a forward-looking statement, must be reviewed in conjunction with the risk that the company faces. These statements are considering the business environment we see as of today, and therefore, there could be this and uncertainty that could cause actual results to vary materially from what we are discussing on this call today. An audio link and transcript of this call will be shortly available on the investor section of our website, www.studentsoftech.com. With this, we are now ready to begin with the opening statement on the performance of the company. And hope that we will be available for the question answer session. And now request to me, sir, to take over. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Neha. Good afternoon, all. Thanks for your time today and for taking time to join our call. Uh, this is our first uh, fiscal year results overview, earnings call, post uh, we going public. So thanks a lot. Uh, many of you uh, might be uh, joining this uh, or knowing, us, uh, knowing about us. Uh, for the first time, so I'll just quickly run you through our company overview. Uh, I'll be keeping my tips short. In uh, five to seven minutes, I'll be uh, completing this so that we have more time for question and answer. So, Fidel Softech Limited is a leading Langtech, like linguistic for languages, plus technology, Langtech services provider, and uh, we specialize in integrating languages with technology solutions so that the last mile delivery is in local languages. Uh, we offer uh, different technology-based solutions and cover 200 plus languages. Uh, I am joined uh, in senior management with Prachi, uh, Kulkarni, Mandar Inamdar, uh, and Sushup Kosar, who is our CTO. Uh, other than us, we have a mid-management team of around 15 plus members uh, who are with us for some time. Our corporate plus our vision is to uh, ensure that technology solutions are available in local language so that uh, for the betterment of community or business. Our services include, uh, our, we have major two categories. One is language engineering services, which include software localization, uh, uh, data creation, uh, language engineering, and enterprise IT services, which includes digital transformation, uh, enterprise product implementation, and so on. Uh, this is our first fiscal year after uh, going public. Uh, we did a 27% uh, revenue growth over last year. Our top line was around 34.2 CR. Uh, we created some new competencies, including uh, technology in the technology space, as well as uh, in uh, language engineering. Uh, Q4 was uh, decent enough. Uh, we had a, a upline of around 9.72 crores. We 
with a year on year growth of 17%. Our yearly growth, we uh, compared to last year, uh, was 27% growth on top line, and EBIT has been around 21% that against 23% last year. Uh, to see from here, I just want to add how we achieved this uh, top line growth. Uh, some of the key wins or initiatives for us for this year were uh, with the growth of AI and ML, there's a huge requirement of large language models, and we are positioned well in uh, multilingual data creation, transcription, or testing of these, uh, uh, or creation of these models or data. Uh, Fidel also has set up competencies in the area of service now, uh, cloud areas, whereby, uh, we, and we continue to tap new enterprise clients. This year we added almost 30 plus new clients, where around four to five have been identified as strategic clients. We also commit MOU to certain uh, customers, where some work has already been started. Uh, Fidel also uh, uh, did one big data collection uh, project. Again, it was for training AI engine, uh, for, uh, where we did data collection for various dialects of Japanese languages. Over the years, we are now seeing around 10 plus clients with 100 states uh, USB of state. Uh, from an uh, outlook perspective, overall, we see a very positive outlook. Uh, we want to uh, uh, we want to share an outlook of around 27 to 30% growth for this coming year. Uh, due to uh, we see continuously uh, our, because of our presence in Japan geography, we see that still as a very stable geography compared to uh, other geography. Uh, our current uh, work in uh, digital technologies, enterprise products, as well as the language engineering. Uh, at least in the uh, current systems, we see a positive uh, pipeline for coming quarters. Esports and gaming is one area that uh, we are also seeing some uh, traction. We already have some customers in this area, and we are trying to look at similar customers in this, uh, in this uh, domain. With uh, new technologies, why there are new technologies like chat GPT, we see that are more, uh, we are seeing interesting patterns where customers are asking us to see how we can leverage these technologies uh, or, uh, and integrate with their solution. Uh, with this, I think uh, there's a uh, brief overview about what we have done. Uh, thanks a lot uh, for participating today, and uh, we are open for any questions. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Uh, with this, we are now ready to open the question and answer session. I will now hand it over to Yashasri. Over to you, Yashasri. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Participants who wish to ask a question are requested to press star and one on their phone now. We have our first question from the line of Imran Khan from Long Bow India Capital Advisors LLP. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, uh, thanks for the opportunity. I, am, I hope I am audible. Uh, sir, my question is on your first of all top line. Uh, you know, uh, I mean, if you compare it with last quarter, there is hardly any growth. Uh, you know, so, so I mean, is this the normal uh, growth that one can expect from your company, or uh, you think you can grow much faster than this? Uh, 
uh, which quarter you have mentioned? The last quarter is if I compare your last quarter with you know same time last year, it's hardly one crore growth over eight eight crore of top line. So what I'm saying is, is it a, a normal thing that you you want to say, or you know we can expect a higher growth from 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 your company because the scale is very small right now. No, uh, earlier we in the last year, last year, last last year. We used to be in a band of around a quarterly uh, rate of 6.5 CR right. per quarter. Uh, last year, we, uh, barring the first quarter, we successfully transitioned to 8.5 CR, where we were trying to still if we can go around 9 or past 9. This year, we see that if we can cross 10, 10 to 12, or we can try to reach closer to 12. So, uh, of course, uh, we are still uh, in the process of building or uh, setting up our sales engine, marketing engine. We have done certain progress last year, but, and we continue to build over that. But, uh, yeah, so there is much potential. Uh, there is a lot of potential, rather. It's just how we can now uh, start tapping this, this area. Uh, all right. And uh, sir, how many employees do you have as on as on you know March thirty first? Employees, number of employees. Yes, yeah. Compared to last year, so, you know, in the last one year, how many employees you have added, and what is the total strength? Today, sir, total one seventy two. Right. Uh, one seventy two. Uh, what we have done is while the addition of employees look marginal. Last, uh, we have also tried to uh, work with uh, independent contractors for certain projects because when we, if there is a long strategic uh, project or land strategic uh, area where we are building competencies, we are of course hiring uh, employees. But for certain projects where we are, we were, we were not sure whether this would continue for a longer duration, we have done with some contractors. Uh, right. Then, then, then my question is, you know, uh, the top line growth is only one crore. If you compare year by year to year, you know, quarter to quarter, sorry. And your employee benefit expenses have actually, you know, it has gone up more than by your revenue growth. So, what was the reason for this? Uh, our, uh, we have a variable uh, component in our. Uh, Salary structure, hmm. uh, so which actually comes in our across in the last quarter or last month basically, uh, and so we have, so that one of the uh, areas uh, because of which the top, uh, the employee benefits look bigger. But but that should be related to or at least linked to the revenue growth yet that you do right. The revenue growth is is hardly uh, around maybe sixty seventy as last compared to last quarter, and and you have a very similar growth in your employee benefit. So it seems like you know it's still very high. Correct. So this uh, this variable that I'm talking is the yearly that we keep aside. And is given at the end of the year. Right. It's not just for the quarter, quarter plan. Mm, right. 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 And 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 is it similar case with your other expenses also? Other uh, so there are in the other expenses in the last quarter we we participated in uh, different events. So there is an event in Dublin called Dala event, which is a uh, which is an organization mainly in the localization of language engineering area, where we participated and so we were some initiatives that we thought would add to subsequent revenue growth in this particular area. Yeah. And 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 this would not continue in the in the coming quarter, right? I mean, it's a one-time event in a in a year, right? So. I think Q1 will see again a normal other expenses then? Yes, yes, yes. So, uh, 
basically uh, we have marked certain events uh, within India as well as global, which kind of address the market that or the area that we work in, like as I mentioned, language engineering or service now or enterprise product. So we are trying to see which events are most suitable for us and accordingly trying to plan us the participating in the But you will, again, this year we are in the process of planning which events we will participate. So this is Amir Patwal and I just wanted to add to what Mr. Sunil Sunil is now explaining. See, uh, we have to increase the visibility of the company across the markets in which we would like to target the goal. And based on that, we have identified certain events where we need to participate, we have to increase our visibility, and we also need to invest in business development to sort of drive this level of growth and also possible to accelerate this growth. So, uh, you will find that those initiatives have been taken up uh, in the second half of this financial year and we have been able to sort of go ahead with this initiative naturally that cost is also coming into public and what's account of the company. But then we would Sorry, like sir. To, sorry. sorry to interrupt, this is the operator. Can you come closer to the microphone, sir? So we would like to continue with this uh, initiatives and uh, increase the visibility of the company so that uh, we are able to tap the markets as well as get uh, new logos uh, right, right. Uh, just uh, operator, can I ask more questions if, if there is nobody in the queue or else I can, you know, move? You can go ahead. Okay, thank you. Uh, sir, since we are talking about, you know, uh, the market and you're, you know, increasing the operations, can you please, please tell us, you know, what kind of, uh, um, let's say in the next two, three years, what kind of, you know, revenues you are targeting? Uh, let's say, 2026 20, 20, uh, or 27 maybe? So, uh, the, the first two years, we were looking at like last year and this year. So, last year we, did, uh, we had thought of 25 to 30%. This year we have seen 27 to 30%, as I mentioned. Uh, what we are seeing that uh, the first time that the entire company is also now uh, understanding that uh, we are chasing or we are going walking towards a certain goal. And so once we have adjusted or we are building this space, in next, uh, after next year, we are looking at 35 to 40% is something that we are looking at. Uh, right, right. And, and so since the company is already profitable, uh, you know, making uh, at least five, five, four, four and a half, five crore profit. Uh, what was the reason for doing this IPO that you did uh, to raise 10, 12 crore rupees? Uh, just curious to know. So, uh, basically, uh, when our company is not just a uh, new startup, we are, we are there. Last few years, uh, or last, all these years, we have always bootstrapped ourselves and uh, if we save certain amount this year, we can say, well, let's try to do this or let's try to do that. There was never a case where we said that, okay, invest in a sales engine upfront or let's hire 10 sales guys or let's do this. Uh, our profitability also last three to four years, we have started continuously uh, trying to build over uh, where we are. So last year was something where uh, we said that, is there any way where we can now uh, see that we build up a sales engine, we build up a, a strategic focus, and go? Then there was area again. If we are limited with whatever tool we have, within that limit, we try to do. We are options to go to banks, angel investors, VCs, or this uh, or the public. So we thought that again, this could be a better. Role. Uh, and and how do you want to utilize this you know cash that you have in the books in the future? You want to keep it as a safety net for your company, or you want to invest it somewhere so that you can get you know grow maybe much faster. So we are uh, we have defined uh, we have uh, reached out saying that we will be using for as a 
working capital, uh, which we have already started, uh, as, as I mentioned, participating agreements, hiring, uh, uh, increasing our our, uh, our reach, business development, and so on. So our branding exercise. Many times, even uh, what we have realized is even in Pune, many companies or people don't know that much. So because we never thought of like, uh, going or as a uh, go as forward as a brand or build our brand and so on. So mainly it's uh, working capital. Uh, that said, uh, and we already spent certain part of it. We are ensuring that we are not rushing into spending it in the sense that uh, given the volatility and uh, we are also trying to see if it is judicious to spend it in certain areas. So we are being a bit conservative. It was our first year and we don't want to end up wrongly spending into, into certain areas. Yeah. Mm, right. That's why I have to say uh, uh, that uh, the, the money would also be used to build uh, different uh, competency centers in different areas of our work as and when we uh, would seek any market opportunity with any of our you know, uh, customers or any of our prospects we are talking to and uh, that is something which if we do would help us grow further. Hmm. Right, right. Uh, got it. Uh, and, and sir, if, if possible, you know, uh, I have been at least thinking, you know, what you are actually doing at your company. So, uh, as a as a name, it suggests, you know, you are doing something with language, as a you know uh, differentiation. But can you help me understand, let's say, a project of your where you have provided a solution to a problem? Can you explain that if it's possible? Uh, no. So, yeah. So basically, I'll just first tell you what type of work we do, so that that might give you an idea. So basically, let's say if you want to generally build up a payroll system, payroll application, you can today go to any uh, company in India and ask them, let I want a payroll system, and they will build it for you. But if you say, I want a payroll system which will generate reports in Telugu, or Japanese. Hmm. Now here, a normal vendor would say, sir, I might not know how to store Japanese characters or how to search for it or, and so on. And there is some such customers would typically come to us. We want to build up an application, multilingual application and so on. This is one, one example. Uh, second would be a, take something like Amazon Alexa. Alexa today speaks with English and uh, it understands English. But today, to make Alexa understand Marathi, Hindi, Bahasa, Simali, Tamil. Alexa's engine has to be trained into different languages so that Alexa understands your that question in uh, Hindi or Marathi, kya, kya hai, kya, kya hai, kya, and so on. So, we will work with someone like Amazon to collect or build data, transcribe it, annotate it, format it in a certain or curate it in a certain format so that it can be loaded or open to that engine. This could be one another area that right. Right. and then, so typically language uh, people think it is just plain vanilla translation as in uh, uh, birth certificate translation or other card translation. But hmm. so there are the unique aspects to it. So when a cat drawing, let's say, is sent from Germany to India, it might have markings or notations in German language. Right. But so get such work where then we extract this text using again scripts translate it and put it back again. This would be a simple engagement again. So, and not, of course, uh, so here, sometimes, or most of the time, some linguistic know-how, at least, and technology, both are needed. So, this acts as a niche as well, but globally, it's a huge market. There are companies who are be doing a billion dollars in this, like transfer fare or global companies. We have just started, and we are now reaching out more. Uh, right, right. So, in fact, that was my next question. Uh, uh, you know, what other companies uh, do you have in the market who are doing similar work? How big they are, and and what kind of competition you are getting from them? So, in, if I see in India, in India it's a very fragmented market, and there are vanilla translation agencies. So, who would be just doing linguistic work? Right. 
So many times we work with them also because they might have certain translators and we can leverage them. Or, and then there are very large IT services companies who have to do just IT services, say like say Persistent for example. But then if they get a Spanish e-commerce website, uh, web uh, e-commerce web application kind of work, they would try to reach out to us if it is you have this expertise of Spanish as well as uh, say Magento or something. Can be done. So at least in India, land and tech together we are not seeing much. That, then there are certain technology companies, but then they are doing say fonts or device drivers or uh, OS and, and so on. Again, they are not our uh, direct competition. In US, there are companies like uh, Landbridge or uh, Translate, and, and, and these are our customers as well. Uh, we localize. Uh, they are much bigger, $200 million, $500 million, and so on. Uh, but then they don't see us as competitors because we are uh, rather they see us as partners in Asia. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, okay, okay. And uh, let, let me then, then, you know, just extend this question. Uh, uh, since you're also working for other IT companies, uh, right? So what percentage of your revenue would be direct from, you know, let's say a client uh, who has a need of this solution compared to, you know, from a third, third party? So uh, we have currently two types of customers. One is directly mentioned, what we call it system integrators or go to company. It could be an ID company or could be a language company. Right. So and then uh, uh, end user firms, like uh, let's say working directly with SAP or working directly with Amazon or that working directly in India with Star and so on. So today, uh, roughly the ratio would be around uh, 30 direct, 30% 30 direct users, 70% all these system integrators or uh, uh, B2B kind of. Uh, sometimes it's 65, 35. Our, of course, idea is how we can increase the direct uh, end user uh, uh, connect or uh, directly go into this. At the same time, these require a lot of uh, longer sales time. We need more account management capabilities and so on. Uh, okay. But yeah, so this is 30, 70 kind of. And, and what would be your wallet share with, with these integrators? Uh, because they must be having other vendors as well. So what kind of wallet share do you enjoy with them? Uh, for, for, so like for example, again, this is a broad question. So for example, uh, we have certain customers in, say like, let's just take SAP. In SAP language and work, our uh, work would be very minuscule. Maybe, I don't know even right, if it is touching one person. But if I take, just the Indian language part of SAP, we might be doing say, 30, uh, 20, 25% or 30%. Other than what they are doing in-house. In India, I don't think other than us is actually working with us, uh, with them on Indian language. So uh, likewise, uh, for certain uh, US centric, these bigger uh, firms as well, for languages such as Japanese or Indian languages, we have a bigger wallet share. But then when we are doing, let's say, the Thai or Bahasa or the German language, we might be very easily compared to uh, Right, right. And uh, uh, since, you know, you want to grow 20, 30, 35%, uh, you know, what do you think would be uh, contributing to your growth? Is it going to come from your end user part of the business or is it coming from you know, you expect this to come from your integra integrator's part, uh, you know, part. Yeah. To, to be honest, uh, at this uh, moment, for us, growth is growth. If it comes from any side, uh, it's welcome. Uh, what uh, what we have, uh, many of these entering into end users, it's not that easy. We have to go to, say, we have to be in front of them, we have to visit them, or, of course, during pandemic now many are open to telecom and so on. But at least through participation in these events, we are trying to add them. That said, uh, currently we are already entrenched in these system integrators where they know our capabilities, uh, especially now with our technical capabilities, like having you know Python and, and different things. We see a larger chunk. Uh, 
the some things that we are seeing is two uh, three areas that we are seeing is so earlier some of this work from US or Europe would go to uh, countries like say uh, Romania or Eastern Europe and now we are seeing some of this language immigration was coming from Europe or US to us earlier they would see uh, many due to, due to time zone or they would prefer that but uh, because of volatility in that market that is coming to us so uh, we see uh, we want if we are already interested certain customers we are trying to see if we can get more value set from there that said we are uh, to participating in events and we are also trying to knock uh, new uh, new company uh, we are also seeing some indian product company trying to go global or uh, indian uh, like e-commerce company trying to go local to tier to tier three cities like like Flipkart Nike Big Basket all our our customers today because not but uh, so this again a drive which we uh, could add to this growth right right and 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 this 25 30% growth year on year you know that you are expecting uh, is it going to come from new customers or is it going to uh, you know come from largely from the existing customers because the business uh, you will you will see some uh, you know wallet share shifting so what what would be the reason behind that 25 30% growth uh, currently uh, one is uh, today if we look at our existing customers and and uh, and whatever the, the growth that we have mentioned we see at least uh, 50 to 60% of already uh, the work lined up that year. so in how we are telling our uh, we are like our sales team and this thing how we can get this extra 30% growth uh, or 20 25% growth from new newer customers when i say newer we are also trying to see how we can improve the quality of customers so there are, there are one time customers sometimes but would there be some strategic uh, partners uh, customers that we can uh, tap or uh, uh, in different markets or something that let's say we are not in middle east today but can we tap certain areas uh, tap someone from there which would add uh, new geography to us and so on so there we are also trying to look at our current portfolio of uh right right and uh, sir this is on this is a very broad question uh, you know we are doing something special i know you know this is a language tech is, is a little special than what general you know it business is but if you look at the you know general very general it business i think people also make their 15 to 20% beta margins right and uh, we are making about closer to 20% margins so i was thinking you know uh, if if uh, just just curious to know why you are not moving into other uh, plain valinda it or little bit specialized it and grow your revenues much faster than you know uh, uh, because the scale is very small right now so what's your thought uh, around that no uh, and that's why uh, so uh, like uh, two years back we never had this uh, thought of building Uh, competency in say let's say ERP or something like import for example. Now with certain uh, as Mandar mentioned just now, we are also trying to see how we can quickly uh, set up new competencies. Now with this esports company, we are helping them with testing esports platform. Mm-hmm. Now can we build up a in-house quick uh, some testing competency? Now roll out this service to similar say companies in US and Europe. So yeah. you are right, we are not. I know from that uh, other is this inclusion of funds and now uh, uh, with this backing of investors as well as uh, we are also seeing how we can quickly uh, uh, launch different services or build up our confidence. Our daily bread and butter is there now. We have foundation uh, and then how we can build from there. Instead of I think we have also going to go looking forward to ask some questions. So, sir, I'm sorry, you're not audible. So I think there are one or two, we see two, three people in the queue. Yes. So that's why we can, I can always reconnect with uh, Imran and uh, again uh, answer any certain questions. But if yeah, you have yeah. any questions so, from others, yeah, please, please, please feel free to take other questions. I was just you know filling the gap because there was no participant. Yes. That is, uh, 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 but if that gives us some uh, idea of 
the thought center. Yes. Time <laughs> synchron for your interest. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Ankit Salgia from Vijit Global Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, thanks for taking my question. Um, and congratulations on good set of numbers, uh, uh, team. So my question is, uh, you have addressed one of the good questions that, um, that, that, that we are talking about now, AI and ML, and um, you know all these things that are chat GPT that is coming up. So on related to that, um, you know, you said we are getting, you know, we got one project um, that we are training, you know, AI engine. Um, uh, but my question is on the other side uh, that are we, um, you know, trying to use those kind of tools in our in-house like chat GPT or those where we can get, um, you know, some of the benefits or coding or like, you know, translating some of our work from those engines so that we can reduce uh, you know, our cost of uh, employee or, you know, um, get some of our work done from chat GPT and um, have an advantage of cost. From that side, and cut out cost or something like that. So, in, thanks a lot, Ankit Ji. Thanks, uh, appreciate the question. So, basically, uh, yes, no, in the sense that for certain enterprises, they specifically ask us not to use any machine translation or anything. That said, we have over the period built some in house tools where we try to build terminologies or build. Um, uh, 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 processes for certain these customers. Then there are certain customers where there is a mandate to rather leverage machine translation. So here either the pre-machine translated text and we do a post edit and that's what we call as MTP or they allow us because you can use any engine or anything and then uh, just give us uh, a turnaround because the contents are increasing. And so there we of course want to leverage something like like uh, uh, any, any machine translation engine that are available in the market, including chat GPT. Uh, chat GPT, what we are seeing, uh, the queries are, uh, like uh, for us, when we are drafting, for example, certain uh, collateral, or earlier we would review certain core, there of course we are trying to see how we can leverage something like chat GPT or build some wrappers around it and then so on. But uh, how uh, of bringing operational efficiency, as I think that is one of the parts, is something that we are continuously working on uh, by using again the, or building uh, something around these tools. Hello? This is Algia. Yeah. Uh, all right. Sounds good. Um, I mean, yeah, that was my question. So do you think in future it can reduce our uh, uh, cost? On like uh, uh, like improve our margins or like we can have better numbers going down the line with the help of these kind of uh, tools available or uh, you know definitely helping us uh, improve our cost in the sense that earlier when uh, even at if we take a vanilla translation uh, uh, part where uh, a translator would do like sixty thousand words per day which was a standard industry benchmark. Now it has grown that a translator should be able to do at least 4,000 to 5,000 words. Because we are making team available all these tools. So there, again, uh, we are ensuring that we are able to do it. That said, there is also, like uh, customers also many times know that you are increasing operational efficiency. They ask for discounts or that and, and, and so on. But yeah, uh, we are seeing some operational efficiency leveraging these tools and technology. Okay, thank you. Let's check from Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, to ask a question, please press star and one on your phone now. We have a question from the line of Jignesh Vaidya from Jiva Research. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for taking my His line is disconnected. Ladies and gentlemen, please press star and one to ask a question.
participants who wish to ask a question are requested to press star and 1 on their phones now. As there are no further questions, I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Sunil Kulkarni for closing comments. Over to you, sir. Uh, thanks a lot for your time and interest today. Really appreciate it. Uh, for us, uh, this going public was a very uh, uh, big event for us. Uh, while we are still in testing and our numbers are small, we are trying to see how we can uh, act can be like a big bigger firm. So one of the steps that we took is uh, this year, we started our quarterly results declaration with a small note of key takeaways. This was to show, showcase that uh, there's transparency and communication from us. Uh, secondly, by declaring certain dividends this year, we also wanted to show that uh, wherever we are uh, making profits, uh, we are, uh, giving it back to the investors, and in that sense, a dividend-friendly company. Uh, that said, uh, we are uh, in a growth mode now. We want uh, you to retain your interest. Uh, maybe not now, but at least continue to see, look at us in coming period. We will ensure uh, growth. Uh, one of the good part is we are working into uh, different markets. One is a very mature market like Japan, and one is a growing market like India. So leveraging these two markets and with a renewed focus on new competencies, I'm sure we'll be able to achieve our numbers. Uh, we are trying to see, uh, coming from a very uh, conservative background, I think my surname is the way, but uh, we are trying to ensure that we sustain this growth. Uh, we sustain our current operations, and then whatever growth we can, we definitely want to grow. So there we are trying to manage it a bit conservatively. Uh, yeah, so I think uh, thanks a lot for your time today. We will continue to, you know, we are accessible. Myself, I'm accessible. You can reach out to us at any point of time. You can visit our office. Uh, thanks a lot. Thank you, sir. On behalf of Fiddle Software Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.